In this video, we're going to talk about the mode of inheritance in genetics called incomplete dominance. This is different than the basic dominant recessive where you have two alleles and when you combine them, it's the dominant one shows. This is different because people who are organisms that are heterozygous, their phenotype is an intermediate between the homozygous phenotypes. So the big idea for an example is um, if I cross a tall plant and a short plant, the offspring would be medium height, right? Because medium is an intermediate between tall and short. Quick note on notation that you'll see. Um, because there's no dominant and recessive, that typical capital letter, lowercase letter, um, to show the different alleles of a gene doesn't really apply here because neither one is really dominant over the other one. So in my example here, the letter H stands for the gene for height, so that's this, and then we designate the different alleles for height using superscripts. So I use T for tall, so here my homozygous tall plant, and then I use the superscript S for short, right here. So we have a plant that's homozygous for tall, one that's homozygous for short, and the heterozygote, it's not like it has M's for medium because M is not an allele, right? Um, medium is the phenotype that's a result of having one tall allele and one short allele. Let's look at a real life example. So there is a flower called a four o'clock and they kind of grow like on this nice bushy plant and they're really pretty and smell wonderful at night. Um, but their flowers have a gene or there's a gene that codes for the production of a protein, right? Genes code for the production of proteins and the job of this protein is to turn a pre-pigment Right, pigment is a color molecule. So to turn a pre-pigment into the pigment molecule xanthophyll, which gives the flower its color. So in this case, this gene we're going to designate as C for color. And then the two alleles are will have R that stands for red. And in this case, the protein is working. Right? It's going to be a protein that turns that prepigment into xanthophyll. And then there's the W allele, which is the allele for a defective form of the protein that doesn't turn the prepigment into xanthophyll. So our three genotypes, right? We can be homozygous for red, homozygous for white, or heterozygous. One of each, right? A white allele and a red allele. And the phenotypes from those, right? Homozygous red, you get a red flower. Homozygous white, you get a white flower. And if you're a heterozygote, right, in incomplete dominance, the heterozygote is an intermediate of the two homozygotes, so that will give you a pink flower. Now let's look at using Punnett squares to determine phenotypic and genotypic ratios of offspring following the mode of inheritance of incomplete dominance. So, if my parents, if my parental generation has um, a homozygous red individual and a homozygous white individual, when they mate, 100% of their offspring will have the heterozygous genotype and they'll all be pink. They'll all show the pink phenotype. Now, if we bred two of these pink flowered four o'clock plants together, their offspring will have a different ratio. So here, right, I'm breeding a heterozygote here and here. And then, as always, right, we're going to drop them down, these alleles down into these boxes, and bring these over, slide to the right. And when we do that, we have 25% of our offspring, these here, are red and have the homozygous red genotype. 50% are heterozygous and are pink, these here. And then 25% are homozygous for white, 
and show the white phenotype. So this is just a good example of how in real life heterozygotes can be an intermediate between parents in incomplete dominance.